Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and it's Friday, which means I get to bring to you yet another obscurity in literature. Now, today's book, which obviously you can see the title of, this is Hardware, the Definitive Science Fiction Works of Chris Foss. I don't really know his work outside of science fiction stuff. And for people, I think, of a certain age, I think that Foss's work is just synonymous with with spaceships. I know there were a lot, and I mean a lot of artists that tried to imitate his style, but I mean he he was the one who set the tone, he set the pace, and that is one of the things I love about this book. And right off the top, check this out, you've got forwards by both Mobius and Jodorowsky, so obviously you're in good company when you've got dudes like that putting together the intros to your book. Now obviously, I mean, unfortunately Mobius is no longer with us. And we need to do something about getting more of his stuff in print in English. But that's a whole different story for a whole nother day. And so right off the bat, you can see here, I guess this first came out 2011, it looks like. All sorts of sci-fi paperbacks that had his work adorning them. And that's not really where I'm most familiar with his work. I think I got around... It and figured out who Foss was kind of in a roundabout way. Um, if you guys are of a certain age like me and remember some of those Terran Trade Federation books, uh, I had one that was adjacent to those. It was like the time, I want to, I think Time Life published it, was like Future Wars and Weapons. But I had all kinds of spaceship books like that, just like the Terran Trade Federation books, uh, full of the various, you know, spaceships, starscapes, monsters, hot ladies, and scantily clad clothing. Quite a wordy introduction here. Uh, what's interesting is some of the sketch work that shows up in some of these. Some of these are older than other illustrations but it's kind of cool i i'm not as familiar with his early stuff at all uh but you can see even early on this is 69 you can already see his eye for decaying decrepit dilapidated architecture structures machinery everything falling apart and this is kind of the background that's one of those things i've always Kind of scene with his work. Here we're starting to see more of the Foss that many of us were familiar with. That is a Mobius design for sure, based on Dune. So Foss was actually going to do the designs for the Dune movie, if I remember correctly, some of the spaceship stuff, which is probably where some people may have first been introduced to his work. Some of his large, bulbous, striped, and patterned ships. That's the thing that always gets me. Uh, that's kind of like, to me, the definitive Chris Foss spaceship. You've got just all these crazy patterns. But then, on the other hand, besides all the crazy patterns, you start to see all those little details and, you know, stuff going on on the sides of the ship. And I love that about his work. You know, I've, I've always been a bit of a retro futurist. I've always enjoyed, you know, past interpretations of what the future is going to hold. So I, I've got, that's another topic for another Friday video. I've got books on, you know, kind of 40s, 50s, 60s sci-fi spaceship interpretations. Now here's where you miniature designers might want to take a good long look. This is something I don't think I've seen outside of this book. Actual design sketches by Foss. You can already see we've got the patterns, we've got the bulbous round ships. To me, this is like late 70s, early 80s. 76 is when the pictures are dated, but just that style makes me think of plain ogre. Lots of spheres, bloated shapes. And again, it's kind of cool to see some different stuff. 
Wait a minute, this is from Alien, it says. Designs for Leviathan landing gear. Interesting, I always thought Sid and me did stuff on that, but... Here we see the original space jockey designs. Interesting. Learn something new every time I pull these books out. Again, it's kind of nice to see some of his black and white work. We don't usually see things like that. Don't get enough behind the scenes. I'm not going to show you all of it, unfortunately. This is a big book, by the way. Not only in its size, but in its page count. It's about 200 pages or so. I'm starting to get into... We've got a series of paintings of planes in various situations or activities. That one hits a little too close to home there. Jump a little further out. Starting to get into some of his landscapes. Funny thing is you don't see a lot of humans in his paintings. They exist, they're there, they just don't pop up very often, but again you see a lot of the angles, the stripes, the patterning, and here's where we get like pure fossness. This is just this is the kind of thing I always remember from my childhood, flipping through all those old books. It may not have even been in those books I had. The artwork is definitely reminiscent of that. I guess if you're going to copy the masters, might as well aim for the best, right? No way. I was not aware this was in here. Uh, I didn't know he did this. This might look familiar to you GW players. That is a cathedral battleship for Battlefleet Gothic. Huh. Didn't know that existed. I mean, the illustration, obviously. I'm quite aware of Battlefleet Gothic. That's pretty cool. Some of these pictures are much newer than others. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff I always remember seeing. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But it looks cool nonetheless. The weird shapes always make me think of the Dune designs. Here we see a nice dilapidated, falling apart junkyard. But definitely these kinds of ships were a major, major game changer. In terms of how spaceships were illustrated. I don't know, the first thing that always comes to my mind for this style of work that was obviously influenced was Angus McKee, just because I'm familiar with his stuff through heavy metal, but I know he did a bunch of those tear and trade books as well. So yeah, I think if you like spaceships, which there's absolutely a that always reminds me of like the God Phoenix from Gachaman. There's a lot of fun to be had here, and at this point you can see I'm just churning pages but oh, I guess it's over almost 240 pages of art wow pretty impressive so as far as I know hopefully this is still in print or at least some variation of it or at least some reasonable facsimile or close to this but I think if you like sci-fi art if you like spaceships especially or just those alien landscapes there's a lot of fun to be had here I must have been having fun too because I thought I got all that paint off my fingers but obviously not been busy getting ready for videos later this week. So hopefully I will have a link on Amazon down there for you to check out. Otherwise, happy hunting. And I'm going to have to hunt down some of those Terran Trade Federation books myself. It's been ages since I looked at those. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.